Okay, fellas, welcome back to preseason training. Hope you all enjoyed your New Year's break. In fact, Kaylin, your face just annoys me at the moment. If you can do 10 laps before you even think about coming back here and no back chat, you better run. Bloody Kevin Durant stuff, mate. Unbelievable. Right, the rest of you, I am really sick of losing to Manchester City. We've got to be on our game from the first whistle here. I know we're underdone. We've had very few competitive games, but can we please finally beat Man City or at least take something into the second league here back in Iceland, okay? Let's get some revenge, boys. Welcome to episode number 150 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode is the first leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League for 2034 and it's a rematch from last season's final as we do take on Manchester City in the away leg. So if you are looking forward to this one as well as a little bit of transfer business thrown in there as well then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but as you can see on screen this is what the first knockout round for the champions league does look like we played the last game of the group stage in yesterday's episode and of course had this draw for the first knockout round so if you missed that one which also included a end of season review i'll leave a link to that over in the top right corner, a very harsh draw for us here off the back of Partizan beating Man City in the last game of that group. Man City dropping down to second. They were one of the teams that we could have got, and sure enough, it is a rematch of last year's final in the first knockout round. And that's super annoying because Partizan haven't even got an advantage over Benfica off the back of the first leg of that other tie in this first knockout round. So not too sure if Partizan got much benefit there out of winning that last game of the group stage against Manchester City, but hopefully that's a sign that these guys are a little bit more vulnerable than they were when we took them on in the final of last season's Champions League. But before we do get into this one, we've just got a little bit of a transfer update before we do get into a preview of the first league from the Etihad. And indeed, it is quite a little transfer update. This is what we've done so far leading into the domestic window opening here in Iceland, just off the back of this first league against Manchester City. As you can see on screen, no notable departures in terms of permanence here from Volsunga in terms of the squad which we did have registered for the Champions League this season. The only sale that we have made so far is Vilhel Gardasson. He was a young winger we did have coming through the club. His potential had just dropped below that two and a half mark and at 20 years old I didn't think he could quite fulfill that so we took the £80,000 on offer for him from Ostende of Belgium. Of course another team who are in the knockouts of this season's Champions League, but he is the only permanent departure here from Volsunga. In terms of the other players, we've actually loaned out Radenko Krolo and Tommy Hilo Horikawa out to two teams who are in the knockouts of the Europa League. They were players we couldn't register anyway with our homegrown club and nation requirements. So hopefully they'll get some good quality football at both Lille and Cologne respectively. Those look like two quite good deals there for two of our more promising players at the club and hopefully when they come back to us at the end of June they will be ready to play some part potentially even in our first rotation but at the very least in that backup team when they can be available for the Champions League next season once they have spent their one season at the club which is a requirement I believe for players under the age of 21. We've also signed a player on a free transfer who does come out of South America that is a midfielder called Fabrizio doesn't have much current ability, but four-star potential for it was worth a gamble. We'll probably look to loan him out to a fellow Icelandic club. So not too much there in terms of notable additions or departures. But we make our way over now to the Dynamics tab. And this is a little bit more interesting than you can see on screen. We have a few players disappointed that we did not let them go yet again. Basaro Gay, we're just going to have to get used to him becoming disappointed at not leaving, I think. But as I said multiple times, he's way too important for us. To let go of this time upset that we haven't let him join Bayern Munich, so he's still at the club, but asking to leave. The same applies for Kenny Boreal. He wanted to join Real Madrid, but we decide to keep hold of him. To be fair, we do have a little bit of upcoming depth in that position with the likes of Luis Herrera, but I thought we'd better keep hold of him 
at least for this upcoming knockout campaign in the Champions League. And then we have our very own Kevin Durant there and Kalen Rakasan. He wants to move to a club with a stronger squad. That is off the back of a bid from none other than Manchester City. So there's the Kevin Durant comparison. And we have had to actually promise him that we will make the latter stages of the Champions League this season so that he does want to stay here at the club. So this first knockout round tie here against Manchester City actually has quite a bit riding on it, of course, with our hopes of getting our first European trophy here at the club and also potentially trying to keep hold of Kalen Rakasan after he pulled a Kevin Durant and tried to move to the team which beat us in the final of the big dance last season. But I think that's all the updates that we need to give you guys in terms of our squad, in terms of transfer activity since we had the end of yesterday's episode in terms of what we have done off the back of that. A lot of friendlies and only the one league cup game we've had in our group so far. That's because the second one actually got postponed, albeit we would have only put out a rotated team for that second game. So it hasn't impacted us too much, but we picked up a 3-0 win away there at Njavik, and that is our lone game that we do have here for the first team competitive-wise going into this first leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League against Manchester City, a team which looks very, very similar to the one which defeated us in the final last season by a scoreline of two goals to one. That was after Bustolo Gay got us off to a good start, but they have a very, very strong lineup here. Do Vincent Company's Manchester City. We have not bet them in five attempts in this save so far. Hopefully, we can get something out of this two-legged tie here in the first knockout round and get some revenge here nice and early in this season's Champions League knockouts. And this is going to be a very important tie, this one, away from home if we can get a draw or something. Going into that home leg coming up in tomorrow's episode, we might be in with a chance of knocking out the defending champions. And from there, I would give us a massive chance if we can get over a team like Manchester City. In terms of us, we come into this one with no injury concerns to the players who are registered for our Champions League squads where our team looks exactly the same as it did in yesterday's episode for that game against Sevilla. Of course, Kenny Boreal is back because he missed that game with a virus, but that is the only change our bench. Pretty strong as well, mostly made up of two and a half star rated players apart from Ian Carlo. And hopefully, as I said, we can get something to take into that home leg come tomorrow's episode. And without any further ado, we'll come back shortly and see if we can finally get a decent result in this save against Manchester City in this first leg of the first knockout round from the Eddie Hart. And here are the team sheets for this first league. Manchester City just looking a little bit different to what they did have before on their club info page. Again, they start with a front two of Haaland and Para Instead of Adeyemi, he is on the bench. They certainly have a lot of depth up front as we ran through before. There is our best 11. And hopefully, as I said, we can get something to take into that home league in tomorrow's episode. And only two minutes into this one, we have the first highlight. Yusuf Demir, free kick. Will Lubick comes out and gets nowhere. But thankfully... Ansu Fati misses a target that was nearly a big blooper there from Will Lurvik. We do still have that 25 million or so pounds left to spend in the transfer window. We'll probably look to do that once we eventually do get knocked out of Europe this season. The one area I think we do need to look to improve is goalkeeper Will Lurvik starting to get on the decline a little bit. That is the lowest rated area in our first 11 at the moment. So that is probably the area we will look to strengthen, as I said once we do get knocked out of Europe, but we were on the attack there, it did fall to Manchester City, the ball, but now we are back on the attack, Chakachare plays the ball here for Adam Saki, Van der Voort makes a meal of that, can't palm that away, it finds the bottom left corner, and that is a dream start here at the Etihad, albeit we won't get too excited yet, because we do know what happened in the Champions League final last season, but that is a great start after only three minutes, Chakachare Slots through Adam Saki van der Voort. Probably should do better in goal there, but we will take it. 1-0 Volsunga after only three minutes. And very shortly off the back of that opening goal, it is now a front in our favour as we do look to play out from the back. Kenny Borio will get this up to Chakachare on the halfway line. And now Bussero gay up to Adam Saki, the goal scorer. He starts to drive for Kenny Maker's way into the opposition box. He does, but a little bit loose there. And Lakumi is there to tidy things up for Man City as they will look for an instant strike back here. If we can take a lead back to Iceland, that would be absolutely massive. A huge boost of confidence against the team, which did beat us in last season's final, and we have not beaten so far in this save. A very strong team led by Vincent Company. Harlan there 
puts the ball into the mixer, but we do deal with it safely, although Basaro gay there with a terrible pass, and it will cost us. He gives it straight to Ansu Fadi and links up with Para, the man who comes in for Kareem Adeyemi, and he is a very good striker, and we can't afford to be giving away gifts like that. That is a very poor goal to concede. Gay trying to link up there with Dumbia, instead finds Fadi, just flicks it on to Para, puts that bottom right corner, and just like that, it's one all after five minutes. And we go forward now, just shy of the 10 minute mark, and this time it is us on the attack, so a pretty topsy turvy start so far. In this one, Lasana Dumbia tries to square that one for Adam Saki. Man City do clear it away, but we are still on the attack here inside the opposition half. Lasana Dumbia, nice ball there for Adam Saki. We'll put that bottom right corner. There is no VAR check, and just like that is a fast, frantic start here, and we make it 2 1 in the away leg, and that is a potentially big second goal, something which we didn't get against these guys in that Champions League final last season. Some good pressure here in the attacking half there and a nice ball from Lasana Dumbia. Saki tucks it away yet again, 2-1 Volsunga after only 10 minutes. And that is half time in the first leg of this Champions League first knockout round. Nothing happening off the back of that second goal to Adam Saki. All the highlights there inside the first 11 minutes. Quite frustrated though with the goal, which we did concede a big error there from Bussero Gay, and he has also picked up a yellow card, so I think quite controversially, we might take him off here for Corral Giroux at half time, but apart from that, quite happy with how we are doing come the start of the second half as we take a 2-1 lead into it here at the Etihad. And five minutes into the second half, it is a corner here for Man C. They go far post, it is one of their players, might have been Lou Kumi there, who gets a header off, but thankfully Levan Tama's there to clear that off the line. They also had a chance a few minutes ago, but was from about one centimeter inside the right byline, straight into the side netting, but Man City have started off the second half pretty strongly. It remains 2-1 though, but we're gonna make one more change. Kenny Boreal not improving off the back of half time on a 6.4. Louis Herrera can come on for him, and hopefully we can hold on to this lead here for the last half hour. And going forward now to the 70 minute mark, still up 2-1, so very happy about that, but Nicholas Zimmerman struggling and on a yellow card, so that will be our last substitution. We've got a few options there on the bench who can play at right wing, but Fabio Maliano does look the most suitable. That's our last sub used, still 2-1 up with 20 minutes left. And shortly off the back of that last substitution, we do start off here with a free kick to Man City. Hopefully we can hold on, as I said earlier, taking our lead back to Iceland would be absolutely massive, although Para makes his way inside the box, and that is just dumb that from our captain in Ali Ramadan. Our captain's not really getting on my good side lately, because of course, Kalen Rakasan is the vice captain, pulling that Kevin Durant leg in to this first leg of the first knockout round. Clear cut penalty, and that will give none other than Erling Haaland the chance here to equalize. And this is pretty frustrating, because that would be both goals, which we've pretty much given away so far, in this game, and indeed, as you would expect, Erling Haaland will tuck that away, and that gets things back to all square. With still 16 minutes left in this one, hopefully that's all the damage that's done so far in this first league, and we can at least take a draw back to Iceland to all with 15 minutes left. And we're up to the A4 minute mark now. It's a free kick for Man City. Erling Haaland puts that top right corner, but I'm pretty sure he was offside there, at least hopefully that's the case. That would be very frustrating, would be the first thing that Man City have done out of their own accord so far in this game, but thankfully he was offside, so we do get away with that one. Still two all with five minutes left. Yeah. And just entering injury time in this one, we're gonna be playing the last few minutes of it with 10 men because Corral Giroux has picked up a red injury. We can't bring anyone on for him, of course, because we've already used up all of our subs. So we'll just chuck a few midfielders here on defend and support as well as our wing backs, because I think a two-all draw, not the worst result here to be taking back to Iceland for tomorrow's episode, but hopefully we get by with these 10 men here as we do enter deep injury time now, two minutes over what was supposed to happen, and that is the end result. A little bit of a frustrating result, that one. We scored two decent goals, gave Man City two away, though, that first half error from Bussero Gate, and then the penalty in the second half given away from Ali Ramadan, that could have actually been a game which we won 2-0, but in the end, it is too all but sore enough there, which hopefully will give us enough to just get our heads up for that second leg back at home and finally get the job done over Manchester City. But that's not a bad result away from home, albeit could have been a lot better there to all at the Etihad.
And back in the inbox off the back of that first leg of this first knockout round in the Champions League. You look at the stats there, Man City actually dominated that game. But when we saw the highlights, I do think it was definitely a game which we could have won, especially the two goals which Manchester City did score. But we're still in this one, taking a draw back to Iceland for tomorrow's episode. And a quick update on that injury to Karel Giroud. He is out for three to six weeks, might not be available for us on the bench for that second leg, but we do have a lot of depth there in that midfield area. We can bring on someone like Paul Stein Anasson or Brynja Galtason to that bench and shouldn't miss out on too much there, hopefully. But at least we are still in this tie going into that second leg, which will be in tomorrow's episode. But that will do it for today. If you did enjoy that draw there at the Eddie Hard, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow and play the second leg and also off the back of that update you guys on some more transfer activity once the window does open here in iceland but until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and i'll see you then cheers